Chapter Two of But Thy Love and Thy Grace by Francis J. Finn, S. J. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Chapter Two. Three days later, or to put it more definitely, on the following Saturday at nine o'clock of the evening, Father McNichols, seated in his confessional, was making heroic efforts to keep awake. The person on the other side of the screen had finished her little tale of sins and was saying. For these and all the sins which I do not remember, I humbly ask pardon of God, and of you, my ghostly father, penance and absolution. Father McNichols suddenly noticed with a start and a jerk that he had fallen into a trance, of how lengthy a duration he knew not. For your penance, my child, he said, say three Hail Marys. By the way, do you work? Yes, father. When do you stop? At half past five. Well, how is it you come so late? I'm such a sleepy head at this hour, you know. Can't you come earlier? I always do, Father. But the day I was going about among the girls who work in the factory with me to get them to take a chance on the diamond ring. Sleep very suddenly took unto itself the wings of the morning. The diamond ring, he repeated. It was no longer nine of the night, but five of the afternoon. Yes, Father, and I'm so thankful to you for putting my name down for ten chances. Miss Dalton told me about it. I'll feel happy over that, even if I don't ring the valuable ring. The word valuable quickened the confessor's memory. He knew few of his penitents in the confessional, perhaps six. One little boy made the confidior more gloomy and mysterious by confessing to Blessed Michael, the dark angel. A little girl, on the other hand, lightened the gloom of the same prayer by changing the archangel into an archangel. There was also a young lady who, for reasons known only to her creator, always giggled in saying, That's all, Father. A working boy invariably accused himself of committing the sin of detraction whenever he tried to pray. An old woman had the habit of cursing the devil, and Father McNichols, wondering whether Heaven's Chancery said it to or against her account, was often tempted to ask whether she did it before or after meals. All these, and a few others who had certain peculiarities of voice or pronunciation, Father McNichols knew. Regina's earmark was the mispronunciation of several words, prominent among which was the word valuable. In Father McNichols' mind, Regina was catalogued as his valuable penitent. Oh, now I remember you, said the confessor. You're the girl that I thought God was calling to a high degree of perfection. You said that to me many times, Father. Yes, and I meant it. Do you make your spiritual reading every day? Yes, Father, for at least ten minutes. And don't you find that it helps you to pray better? Yes, Father. Whenever I read a chapter of Thomas a Kempis with attention, I can say my prayers ever so much more easy. And what about that little prayer of St. Ignatius I gave you a few weeks ago? Do you say it? Sometimes, Father, when I'm brave. I hope you will grow brave every day, my child, and I don't wonder at your fearing to say that prayer. I know very holy men who say it with timidity. It is an act of perfect love of God. Also, it is an act of perfect renunciation. The very first words, Take, O Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my whole will, whatever I have and possess, are perfect generosity. Then the words, Thou hast given me these things, to thee, O Lord, do I return them, our true gratitude and true love. Receive them, dispose of them, according to the extent of thy will, our resignation to God's will in all things. And then, my child, the concluding words, if really meant by their utterer, are enough to stir the courts of heaven. Give me but thy love and thy grace, for these are sufficient for me. That is one of the most sublimest prayers of human composition to be found outside of the Gloria and the Preface, if, indeed, either of these may be considered of human origin. When you really can say, and mean that prayer, you are on the road to sanctity. Ah, oh, but, Father, there is the trouble. There are lots of other things I want, and I am afraid to think of praying not to get them. For instance? Oh, Father, I do so want that diamond ring. And I do not think that you should want it with overmuch eagerness. Try to get rid of that desire, my child. It is only a vain imagination. 
and then father you know him oh him echoed the confessor mentally adding i've forgotten all about him well what about him he's been drinking again father and i feel so bad he promised me two months ago that he wouldn't touch a drop for a year and now i don't know what to do i've given him my promise and i do love him but it sickens me to think that i'm going to marry a drunkard but what am i to do for several seconds father mcnichols hesitated before answering if he can't keep sober for love now that he's trying to get you he most probably will not once you are bound to him forever shall i give him up then father i leave that to your own judgment and the workings of grace meantime try to say that prayer once every day and especially just after receiving holy communion god bless you go in peace end of chapter two